Yes, I'm live now. Welcome on second to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. Good evening everyone. Do join quickly and I will be conducting your Mahamarathan mock test series for the upcoming Gujarat set English literature exam. Do join quickly. This is the part one. Do join quickly. I hope you are all well by the grace of Almighty. So this is a kind of Mohammedan mock test series for the upcoming Gujarat set. Do join quickly and let me know if the PPT is clearly visible to everyone and my voice is clearly audible to everyone. I think everything is okay and we can start before starting the session. This is my humble request to all the UGC unit and UGC aspirants. Please make sure to subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification and to stay updated as well. Do join the telegram channel that is Santu Sahu UGC net. And here are some available courses UGC Net JRF State Guidance UTPG. These are available courses for all of you. Do join quickly. I'm waiting for all of you. I think everything is okay. Please do let me know. Again, this is my humble request to all the aspirants. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay. And I don't want to waste your time. So let's begin the session. And here is your first question on your screen. Here is your first question on your screen. You can answer in the comment box. So here is the first question. Do answer in the comment box. The first question is that who among the following is not a prose writer? Who among the following is not a prose writer? Roy Campbell, A. E. Coppert, Lord Dance, and Somerset Mom. In may say con prose writer. Who is not a prose writer? What would be the right answer here? We have also discussed earlier this question in some of my older videos. Here the right answer is actually Roy Campbell. Roy Campbell is the uh, writer who is not a prose writer actually. So here the right option is Roy Campbell. Moving on to, uh, sorry, here is the explanation that Ignatius Royston Dunchy Campbell, who is also known as Roy Campbell, was a South African poet, literary critic, literary translator, war poet and satirist. So he was not a prose writer. Okay, moving on to question number two. Identify the correctly matched pair. Amitabh goes all about age heterer. Anita Desai, inheritance of loss. Sasi Despande, a bend in the Gangaj. And Salman Rusdi, the enchantress of Florence. Now you have to identify the correctly matched pair. What would be the right answer here? Keep answering in the comment box. Those who have joined, please do answer in the comment box. Do like the session, share with your friends, and let the channel spread with your friends as well. So here you all know that all about age hatterad is a work by G. V. Desai. That is all about Hindustan hatterad, and that work had already in had influenced Salman Rushdi to coin the term certifications. Anita Desai's inheritance of loss. No, it's actually inheritance of loss is by the daughter of Anita Desai, that is Kiran Desai, that is <coughs> hmm. Sasi Despande here. Sasi Despande, a band in the Gangas is not a work by Sasi Despande, rather it's a work by Manohar Malgankar. So all about is heterod by J.V. Desani. It's by J.V. Desani. Then it's by Kiran Desai. It's a work by Kiran Desai. Sasi Despande has written, no, it's not a band in the Gangas is by Manohar Malgankar. Okay, Manohar Malgankar, okay, Malgankar, okay, and here the right option is D actually, Salman Rushdie, the enchantress of Florence. This is the correctly matched pair. Okay, this is a work by a band in the Gangas by Manohar Malgankar. It's a, it's a uh, Saith Academy Award winning novel. Okay, a band in the Gangas. Okay, here is the question number three. Phonetics, semantics, syntax, lexis. We have also discussed earlier these questions. Match the following. Here. <clears throat> A.
so you all know that lexis lexis is words okay lexis is words semantic is meaning whereas phonetics is the sound whereas syntax is the structure so we have answered b okay so here a3 exactly a3 then v4 semantics it no semantics is actually one b1 b1 here only option and c4 that is syntax is actually structure and lexis is what so here it's c actually it's not b okay phonetics is actually what phonetics is the i'm telling you phonetics is the sound okay semantic is meaning syntax is syntax is structure whereas lexis is words okay ठीक है चलो नेक्स्ट ओके आई विल टेक इन द स्क्रीन शॉट विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज अ कार्टेल सोनेट ऑन फास्ट लुकिंग इन टू चैपमैन होमर डेथ बी नॉट प्राउड द वर्ल्ड इज टू मच विद अस एंड पाइज ब्यूटी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज a cartel sonnet it's a work by whom cartel sonnet these sonnets who popularized cartel sonnet it's by girard manley hopkins gm hopkins so here the right answer is pied beauty okay it's pied beauty pied beauty is an example of cartel sonnet clear hopkins only examples of the form are pied beauty peace and as books these are actually cartel sonnet okay pied beauty is an example of which of the following is not a critical study by william emson william emson you all know one of the new critic one of the new critic which is a form of uh, which is actually a uh, which is actually a, a part of formalist criticism new critic william emson which is not a critical study by william emson seven types of ambiguity that has published in 1930 the dyers and milton's got some versions of the past world in me se kaun sa work william emson ne nahi likha hai what would be the right answer here yeah you were right actually biba so d was the right answer of that question uh, d was the right answer of question d uh, question 4 <coughs> okay now here the right you know that seven types of ambiguity was published in in, the, in his year 1930 1930 hmm 1930s here seven types of ambiguity so these all three works milton scott some versions of the pastoral these are all works by william emson whereas the work called uh, that is dyer's hand who wrote dyer's hand dyer's hand is a work by a sonnet of 11 lines actually pied cartel sonnet is actually a sonnet of 11 lines rhyming with a b C A B C. Okay, so you are asking about cartel sonnet. Cartel sonnet, a sonnet of eleven lines. Rhyming scheme जो है उसका A B थोड़ा different है, ठीक है? That is A B C A B C and D C. uh then b d c or sometimes it is also changed chalo so it's 11 lines okay in three of his poems he had used one is pied beauty peas and as bogus 
here its work by dyers and is by whom it's a work by actually Auden. the dyers and other is a, is a collection of basis and lectures by wh Auden. what did tolstoy famously say about writing poetry it is like a walk in the park it is like a plowing and dancing at the same time it is as easy as breathing and it is like solving a complex equation what did tolstoy famously say about writing poetry we have also discussed earlier this question it is like a plowing it is like plowing and dancing at the same time he talks about poetry so here b is the right answer okay now moving on to question number seven which of the following is a critical work of ben johnson we have also discussed earlier discourse of the english poetry discoveries art of english poesy and apology for poetry which of the following is a critical work by Ben Johnson? What would be the right answer here? Here the right answer is discoveries. Discoveries, it's food title is timber. Okay, discoveries is the right answer that was written by Ben Johnson. Here you see timber or discoveries, a series of observations on life and letters. Here Johnson held forth on the nature of poetry and drama and paid his final tributes to Shakespeare. Here he gave his final tribute exactly borrowed you were right. Absolutely, it's B discoveries or timber timber or discoveries so here he is giving his final tribute to Shakespeare in spite of acknowledging a belief that his great contemporary was an occasion full of pins so timber or discoveries by Ben Johnson where he is country uh, where he is tributing okay giving uh, his final tribute to Shakespeare which theorist is associated with the idea that art is a copy of copy Plato, Julia Christopher, Walter Benjamin, Louis Althusser. Copy of copy. And where he is giving an example of his chair. He is giving an example of a chair. Easy one. Quickly do answer. Art is a copy of copy. What would be the right answer here? It's Plato. Okay. It's an easy one. Very easy one. It's Plato. Plato is the right answer, isn't it? Plato is the right answer. Plato is, has talked about that art is a copy of copy. Exactly, Goro, you are absolutely right here. Plato. Here you see, Plato had two theories of art. One may be found in his dialogue, that is the Republic. So he gave this idea in Republic. And seems to be the theory that Plato himself believed. Here he said that according to this theory, since art imitates physical things, art is imitating, yeah, Biva, you are right also, art imitating physical things, which in turn imitate the forms. Art is always a copy of copy and leads us even the farther from truth and towards illusion. Okay. Chalo. Prague circle, that is Prague linguistic circle, was disbanded in. Prague linguistic circle was disbanded in. We have also discussed earlier this question. Prague linguistic circle was disbanded in
ओके नाइनटीन थर्टी फोर नाइनटीन नाइन नो इट्स नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू प्रोबली या After the Segel's topic, Kuba defeat of 1948, the circle that is Prague linguistic circle, that is Prague linguistic circle was disbanded in 1952. Hmm. Chalo. According to Jean Baudrillard, so here is a work called yeah 1952. Viva, you are right. Simulacra and simulation. So remember that this is a work by Jean Baudrillard, the simulation. Exactly, Viva. So according to Jean Baudrillard, here is a work Simulacra and simulation. What does a simulacrum become in its own right? What is simulacrum become? What does a simulacrum become in its own right? A reflection of reality, a mere copy of the real, an imitation of the real, or the or the hyper real. Keep sharing with your friends. Do like the session as well, and do join the Telegram channel to be updated, to remain updated as well for the upcoming classes. Exactly, we have also done it earlier. Hyper real, exactly. Go to it. You are absolutely right here. Hyper real. Here, a French mathematician and the social theorist Jean Baudrillard argues. The in his uh, in the work in her work that is simulacra and simulation that a simulacra simulacra is a is not a copy of the real but it becomes what the hyper real okay it's become the hyper real here Baudrillard defined hyper reality as a generation by models of real without origin or reality and uh, hyper reality is a representation a sign without an original referent. The meaning of meaning is a work was authored by William Mimson, I. R. Richards, I. Uh, I. R. Richards even and uh, C. K. Ogden uh, and C. K. Ogden. Who wrote the meaning of meaning here? meaning of meaning it was written is actually in collaboration no uh, a meaning of meaning it was written in collaboration with i richards had written in collaboration with ck ogden with ck ogden theek hai so here c is the right answer you will see this work was written in collaboration with i richards and ck ogden they have collaboratively written i uh, written this work Mina Cordy, the most independent and high-powered women character in Saul Bellow's novel, occurs in *The Victim*, *The Dangling Man*, *Hard Job*, *The Dean's December*. In which work, uh, the character here called Mina Cordy appeared? Okay, have you answered here? Uh, B, why are you answering question number twelve or eleven? Okay, yeah, got it. D here, twelve D. The Dean's December. Mina Cordy is actually a character in. It's not even the victim, the dangling man, hard job, and the Dean's December. Mina Cordy is a character in Dean's December. So D is the right answer. And dangling man is the debut novel of Saul Bellow. Okay, that is written in epistolary form. Father and the Sasur argued that the units in language are Mina Cordy is a character that is from Dean's December.
now here what would be the right answer Yeah, that is uh, here contrastive, contrastive and relationship. Okay, units in language are they are contrastive and they are relational. So, so you argued that units in language are contrastive and relational. This means that the meaning of a linguistic unit is determined by its relationship to the other units in system. Yeah, got it, Neva. Absolutely right. For example, the meaning of the word dog is defined by its contrast with the other word in the same semantic field such as cat and horse and cow. So that is here contrastive and that is the relational. Poetry is, emo poetry is emotions we collected in tranquility. Easy one who define poetry in these words. So quickly answer. Till now tell me who wrote the provoked husband <clears throat> Chalo, what's worth now who wrote the provoked husband your options are etheridge george etheridge Polisiever Number three is William Wycherley. Number four is Van Brew. Who wrote the provoked husband? Provoked husband. B R U G H Provoked husband is actually work by John Van Brew. Like Nia Pito stock nahi ho raha hai, buffering. No, it's John Van Brew. Okay, the provoked husband is a comedy by John Van Brew. Hmm. Van Brew started the play, but it was later finished by Collie Sieber. Hmm. The provoked husband is a work by, it's a comedy by John Van Brew. He had started this work, he left unfinished, and this work was finished by Collie Sieber. That is the provoked husband and 14b is the right answer what's for poetry on a catitude in science is a short story written by which author gabriel garcia marquis julio cortezer george luis borges pablo neruda this is from uh, that the earlier question that is the provoked husband is from the restoration rest Restoration, the big five. Restoration. We have the big five, the concept of big five. We have William Wycherley, William Congree, George Parker, Sir John Van Brew, George Etheridge. Restoration comedy, the provoked husband. Here, on excatitude in science, the short story written by which author? Who wrote this short story? Here is no buffering Viva. Here is no buffering actually. 
गुड आर यू फेसिंग एनी बफरिंग बट आई आई कैंट फाइंड एनी बफरिंग हेयर चेक योर रेजोल्यूशन बीवा नो इट्स बाई जॉर्ज लुइस बोर्गिस ओके ऑन एक्स कैटिट्यूड नो इट्स ए इट्स सी इज द राइट आंसर जॉर्ज लुइस बोर्गिस हेयर यू सी that on exactitude in science or or on rigor in science here it's a one paragraph short story written in 1946 by george louis borges about the map territory relation written in the form of literary forgery so here george louis borges is the right answer who said about kids love letter who said about kids love letter as the sort of love letters of a sergeant's apprentice which one might hear read out in a breeze of promise case yeah okay 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 at the end i will be making a okay big 5 na you are talking about that big 5 uh, definitely definitely okay Wait a minute. I will be discussing that. The big five of the restoration comedy. I ah, exactly got it, Biba. Yeah, from my side there is no issue actually. Okay, the sort of love letters. It's actually what would be the right answer here? It's Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold is commenting on. kids love letters as the sort of love letters of a sergeant's apprentice which one might he read out in a breach of promise case so here matthew arnold is the right answer which is sol sol bellows first novel written in diary form dandling man hearts of the dim december the adventures of oggy march we have discussed earlier in the previous question the first novel written by diary format uh, by sol bellow here is the dangling man okay the dangling man is the debut novel by sol bellow and in the the dim december here mina cordy appeared the character mina cordy okay appear in Dim December. So, Dangling Man is the right answer, which is the debut novel that was written in diary format by Saul Bellow. So, here A is the right answer. The Mask of Red Death. Exactly, you are right. A is the right answer. The story follows Prince Prospero's attempts to avoid a dangerous plague known as the Red Death by hiding in his abbey. Who wrote this work? the mask of the red death options are henry james catherine mansfield d h lawrence edgar allan poe okay got it biba here is the mask of the red death the story is following the story follows prince prospero's attempts to avoid a dangerous plague known as the red death by hiding in his abbey who wrote this work what would be the right answer here exactly it's edgar allan poe edgar allan poe has written this work the mask of the red death excellent excellent gorod here d is the the american writer edgar allan poe viva you are absolutely right edgar allan poe is the right answer moving at to question number 19 here 
which organization recommended the establishment of a national institute for training, teaching, and research in mass communication in India in 1962-1963. Your options are Indian Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Ford Foundation, which is also known as UNESCO team, Anna University, National Institute of Open Schooling. And let me see how many of you are able to answer the questions very correctly. Do answer correctly and like the session, share with your friends. Establishment of which establishment of a national institute for training, teaching, and research in mass communication. It's with view to make the best of the use of communication facilities for information, publicly and development, the government of India sought the advice of the Ford Foundation team of internationally known as communications specialists who recommended the setting up of a National Institute for Training, UNESCO. That is Ford Foundation on UNESCO team, isn't it? With a view to making the best use of communication facilities for information, publicity and development, the government of India in 1960-1960, they sought the advice of Ford Foundation or UNESCO team of internationally known mass communications uh, communication specialist who recommended the setting up of National Institute for Training. Okay, the deep structure and the surface structure was given by Benjamin Hoff, Sapper, Halijay, Chomsky. Hmm. It's Noam Chomsky. Noam Chomsky has given the concept deep structure and surface structure. When was aspects of the theory of syntax published? 1957, 62, 64, 65. This is also an important work by Noam Chomsky. This is also an important work by Noam Chomsky. Chomsky has written this work called Aspects of the Theory of Syntax. Okay. This work was published in which year? And another work is called Syntactic Structure, is also by Noam Chomsky. Here, this work was published in the year 1965. 1965 is the right answer. Aspects of the Theory of Syntax. Here, you see uh, Aspects of the Theory of Syntax. Aspects of the Theory of Syntax. This work was published in 1965. Okay. Aspects of the theory of the syntax, 1965. Here, syntactic structure is also a work by Chomsky published in 1957. Okay, so these are important works by uh, their Ameri the American linguist It's not enough, okay, it's not enough actually No, 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 never, never In order to qualify any set exam, this is not actually a uh, not an easy task okay, by only watching the videos of any YouTube channel. Yeah, there are not sufficient videos on G set, and uh, probably I am making videos for the upcoming G set exam. Probably there are total seven to eight videos. So these seven to eight videos are not sufficient to crack. G set exam, but if you watch the playlist, all the videos from my playlist, 
and I can assure you that you will definitely crack the exam. So, but these seven to eight videos, yeah, every time they will, every time they will ask you new questions. Exactly. That's why that's why deep reading is needed. That's why you have to read. You have to read the authors. Okay, one by one. Make a list of the authors, and every day try to complete three to four, three to four authors. Okay, and the important summary of those work. Hmm. The you can remember the short summary or the story of that work and important character settings the backdrop of the work important the title the inspiration all these things need to be written down mm, on your notebook so here uh, and this is how you can tackle nobody is actually or and nobody will be able to nobody will be able to uh, answer 100 questions okay probably 70 or 60 to 76 60 to 65 or 70 question okay the uh, 60 to 70 questions are answerable actually 30 questions is a very tough to answer actually hmm. where did satan hold a solemn council with the fallen angels paracelsus pandemonium celestial city garden of eden definitely i'm telling you 60 to 17 questions 60 to 70 questions are answerable whereas the remaining 30 questions are very tough to answer and even though and those people those aspirants those genius who got jrf actually even they even fail to answer the remaining 30 questions okay hmm. and that is super duper So here is pandemonium is the right answer pandemonium the capital city of hell it's the capital city of hell It begins after Satan and the other fallen angels have been defeated and banished to hell or as it is also called in the poem, it is also called the, 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 the that is the pandemonium is also the hell is also called Tartarus. In pandemonium, the capital city of hell, Satan employs his rhetorical skill to organize his followers and he is helped by, he is aided by Mammon and Beelzebub as well. So hell, hell is also described as Tartarus in that book and pandemonium the capital city of hell uh, here satan is employing his rhetorical skill to organize his followers and he is aided by held by whom mammon and beelzebub easy questions okay 1916 quotes in general linguistics regarded who wrote this book chalo My pleasure, Biba and Gorod. And tell you, uh, let me tell you, Gorod, I we have not finished the course yet. Okay, let me finish the course. Then I. I it's uh, Fadin the Sasur. Okay. And everything will be in that node, okay, what I am providing in that crash course batch, okay, everything will be, I mean, I mean most of the things will be in that nodes actually, hmm. we have not completed the course yet, just we are continuing.
so uh, it's Padan this Sasur is the right answer which of the following writers did not get the Nobel Prize Octavio Paz Rabindra Tagore Robert Frost William Butler it's where Octavio Paz got the Nobel Prize probably in 19 uh, 1919 it's a, a, a Romanian writer probably 1990 and William Butler it's got the Nobel Prize in 1923 and Rabindra Tagore uh, got the Nobel Prize in 1913 okay so here it's Robert first is the right answer no 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 did not get the Nobel Prize did not get the Nobel Prize it's Robert first Robert first got the got Pulitzer Prize four times which what prize Pulitzer Prize okay four times hmm? So Robert first is the right answer. Octavio Pach, Ravinder Tagore, William Butler, it's they are the Nobel laureate. And uh, apart from that, Robert first, you need to know about Robert first that Robert first is known as terrifying poet. What? Write it down. Robert first is known as terrifying poet. Okay, cello. Here 24, C is the right answer. During which time period the great vowel shift primarily take place? Great vowel shift. Obviously BC. Ready? Which one? Eleven to thirteenth century, thirteen hundred to fifteenth century. 1400 to 1700 1600 to 1800 Anno Dominion BC before Christ Here, it's 1400 to 1700. Okay, great Bible ship 1400 to 1700. So here, C is the right answer. What linguistic change occurred during the great vowel shift? Only changes in consonant sounds, changes in Middle English short vowels, changes in Middle English long vowels. No significant change occurred. That is wrong. What linguistic change occurred during the great vowel shift? Only changes in consonant sound that is also wrong. Changes in middle English short vowels, long vowels. I think it's long vowels. Okay, it's long vowels. Hmm. The great vowel shift was a series of changes in the pronunciation of the English language that took place between 1400 and 1700, beginning in southern England, today having influenced effectively all diaries of English. Uh, through this vowel shift, that is, the pronunciation of all middle English long vowels was changed. So here the long vowels was changed. Yeah, it's very long vowels. Where? So it's long vowel changes. Most of the time I prefer Wikipedia. Yeah, 
डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली ओके बिकॉज दैट इज एक्चुअली दैट इज एक्चुअली ऑथेंटिक वन सो चेंजेस इन मिडल इंग्लिश लॉन्ग फाइवल्स इज द राइट आंसर हु फर्स्ट स्टडीड द ग्रेट भावल शिफ्ट एंड क्वाइन द टर्म यू मस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस क्वेश्चन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ग्रेट भावल शिफ्ट फोर्टीन हंड्रेड टू सेवेंटीन हंड्रेड बीच में हुआ था and coined the term but most important thing is that you have to be consistently focused okay samuel is gareth padnan the sasur otto this person noam chomsky who coined the term and studied great bhavel shift here yeah, the right answer is there is a book called even that book we have read i had read that book in my first year on my graduation that book was written by otto jess person c l rain and otto jess person so that book yeah it's otto jess person it's otto jess person and that is philology that's a book on philology okay so otto jess person is the right answer here who had coined the term and first studied great bible shift it's otto jess person here the great bible shift was first studied by otto jess person okay a danish linguist and anglicist who coined the term as well it's otto jess person remember that and what the look look here so due to this great bible shift what happened the pronunciation of all middle english long vowels was changed one thing the pronunciation of all middle english long vowels was changed number two some consonant sound also changed particularly those are particularly those that became silent the term great vowel shift is sometimes used to include these consonantal changes as well okay another thing is that the standardization of english spelling began in the 15th and 16th century spelling ka standardization hua hai theek hai the great vowel shift is the major reason of english spelling now often deviate considerably from how they represent pronunciation theek hai so the english the standardization of english spelling began due to that great vowel shift so these are the consequences these are the result as a due to this great bhavel shift who made the sensational pronouncement of end of ideology in 1950 in 1960 david bell graham green mulkas anand octavio patch sorry it's david bell okay it's david bell end of ideology the end of ideology is a book by whom by it's sorry it's by daniel bell it's not david bell it's daniel it's daniel bell actually daniel bell in 1960 in simple words bell talks about how big ideas about politics from the past were used up and not so important anymore hmm. so the end of ideology by daniel bell in 1960 mask of blackness which was an early jacobian era mask even another work which called the mask of beauty which was a courtly mask who wrote these two mask Ben Johnson, Samuel Johnson, Milton, Samuel Richardson. Who wrote? Mask of Blackness, Mask of Beauty, Mask of Anarchy. Who wrote it?
इट्स बेन जॉनसन एग्जैक्टली मास्क बेन जॉनसन विच इज द मोस्ट विच थियोरिस्ट इज मोस्ट क्लोजली एसोसिएटेड विद द आइडिया ऑफ आर्ट एज इमिटेशन जैक्स द रीदा जैक्स लकान एंड एडवर्ड साइजन प्लेटो एंड गोरोड आफ्टर द यूजिशन इट एग्जाम एंड आई विल बी मेकिंग वीडियोज ऑन एवरी इम्पोर्टेंट राइटर on youtube even okay and every day i'll be covering one writer one by one it's plato for one is critic believe that the value of a work cannot be determined by author's intention so i told you that what term do they use what term do they use when speaking of this belief the pathetic fallacy the intentional fallacy the affective fallacy the objective correlative Yeah, exactly. You are to write. Yeah, it's not an easy task. That's why you have to be consistent. It's affective fallacy. Why it's formal critic? It is actually a concept of. new critic but i told you that new critic is a part of formalist hmm so effective fallacy is the right answer which of the following statements best describe clean brooks attitude towards studying literature that is of the new critics critics should examine historical information surrounding literary work that is wrong critics should attempt to paraphrase no he is coining the term heresy of paraphrase when you are paraphrasing a text you are making a mistake you are doing an error that is an heresy of paraphrase critics should attempt to no, that is also wrong critics should look at the biographical information no new critics deviating from that biographical information so the right answer is critics should develop universal readings of text isn't it yeah exactly you are right b is the right answer clean brooks new critic parol language and parol abstract system of language the diachronic aspect of language actual speech standard educated speech we have discussed even earlier language and parol what is parol language is the abstract system of language whereas parallel is the it is compared with performance okay isn't it exactly now here is question number 33 parallel is compared with performance and language is compared with competence parallel is actually actual speech okay and abstract system of language is the language which is compared to competence whereas parallel is compared to performance here actual speech p se performance theek hai actual speech abstract is language or competence samta abstract thing the rules when you are using the rules 
when you are speaking actual speech that is actually parallel you are always making mistake you are always what literary theory emphasizes the instability of language and meaning there is no single meaning i know that you always make mistake and even now you are making the same mistake earlier even you did the same thing reconstruction there is no single meaning instability of language and meaning that is reconstruction there is a see felder is a character in galsorti's justice gb search arms and the man john uh, james sinch uh there we have pulled from i for john millington sinch like that the veil well of the saints galsorti's loyalties Felder is a character in Felder is a character in I think as a cat from justice Gal source is justice okay Gal source is justice so Felder in justice Felder is technically the hero of the play hmm? He is the pivot around whom the whole play revolves. He is the center of all events, the center of attraction, the center of pity, the center of our sympathy. Yet he is an unheroic hero. Justice may falter. Exactly. How vainly men themselves amaze to win the palm, the oak, or base. Opening lines of Andrew Marvel's work, Henry Bond's work. The Richard Cra Richard Crash or George Herbert, all of them are the metaphysical poets. Richard Crash, one of the cavalier. Robert Herrick. So uh, this is the opening line of the poem called The Garden. Now tell me the garden is a poem by whom? The garden is a poem by exactly it's by Andrew Marvel. Andrew Marvel has written the poem called The Garden and this that poem opens with how vainly men themselves amazed to win the palm, the oak or beige. Who said Spencer read, write or read no language? Samuel Johnson. Alexander Pope Swift Ben Johnson Spencer write no language Swift was a misanthrope, hater of mankind. Here it's Ben Johnson, okay? Remember that Ben Johnson told that Spencer write no language. It's Ben Johnson is the right answer. Chalo. 38. Who is famous writer of the middle style? We have asked earlier discussion. Who Tom did? Famous writer of middle style. Middle style and who termed it here you see Addison's prose style is what Dr. Johnson termed as the middle style. Hmm? It's Joseph Addison. It's Joseph Addison 
द राइटर ऑफ मिडिल स्टाइल हु टर्म्ड और हु क्वेंट दिस मिडिल स्टाइल इट्स बाय सैमुअल जॉनसन इट्स बाय सैमुअल जॉनसन हु क्वेंट द टर्म ओके वी आई हैव आंसर्ड हियर एडिसन स्प्रोथ स्टाइल इज रेफर्ड टर्म्ड एज मिडिल स्टाइल अ स्टाइल व्हिच इज नॉट टू फॉर इनफॉर्मल नॉट रिजिडली फॉर्मल आइदर आई थिंक इफ आई हैव इफ आई हैव गिवन यू द ऑप्शन यू were we able to answer the question we had done it earlier epic and novel towards the methodology for the study of the novel dostoevsky's leo tolstoy mikhail bakhtin and anton chekhov tell me 39 here i have 50 questions and then i will be telling you the big five of restoration committee it's 39 11 questions left okay this is a work by the essay epic and novel towards a methodology for the study of the novel is the work by whom it's a work by it's not dostoevsky it's not leo tolstoy even it's not by anton chekhov so here the right answer is actually right answer is it's mikhail bakhtin okay this mikhail bakhtin is the right answer okay mikhail bakhtin is the right answer epic and novel towards the methodology for the study of the novel is an essay by mikhail bakhtin published in 1941 where he is comparing the novel to the epic which novel of graham green which novel of graham green deals with the persecution of catholics in mexico we have earlier did this the end of the affair the comedians the power and the glory travels with my aunt the persecution of catholics in mexico she answered b na no here question number 40 40 here the right answer is actually uh, the power and the glory exactly or absolute right the power and the glory remember that catholics in mexico well done graham greens the power of the glory published in 1940 the story of a fugitive whiskey priest 1930s mexico is a short and pathos laden novel about the religious persecution after the mexican revolution the catholic church at the time was the under attack for its considerable wealth and social control what was the first published title of christopher marlowe's play the jew of malta malta where barbaras is the main protagonist barbaras is the main protagonist the tragedy of the jew of malta the tragedy of rich jew of malta the famous tragedy of the rich jew of malta and the story of rich jew of malta which was the original title the first published title of christopher marlowe's play the jew of malta it's the famous tragedy it's the famous tragedy in the reach of jew of malta theek hai it's the famous tragedy in the reach uh, of the reach jew of malta the jew of malta the famous tragedy of the reach of jew of malta okay it's the famous tragedy of the reach jew of malta is the right answer c chalo who is the first recipient of sahitya academy award and when tell me easy question first recipient of sahitya academy award and when okay tell me very quickly do answer 42 we have 50 questions only 8 questions left then we will be the first recipient of award is rk narayan it's rk narayan in 1960 for his work the guide published in 1958 for this work rk narayan was awarded with the prestigious rk narayan yeah exactly you are absolutely right 
साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड वेल डन साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड फर्स्ट विनर वाज आर के नारायण वाज गिवन द अवार्ड ऑफ पॉलिश नोवेल द गाइड इन 1916 पब्लिश्ड दिस वर्क वाज पब्लिश्ड इन 1958 आफ्टर 2 इयर्स दिस नोवेल गॉट द साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड फॉर व्हिच वर्क महेश दत्तानी गॉट द साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड फॉर व्हिच वर्क महेश दत्तानी एग्जैक्टली योर राइट एब्सोल्युटली फैंटास्टिक हियर महेश दत्तानी गॉट द साहित्य अकेडमी अवार्ड फॉर व्हिच वर्क व्हिच इज अ व्हिच इज अ कलेक्शन ऑफ प्लेज ओके आई एम टेलिंग यू इट्स अ कलेक्शन ऑफ प्लेज इट्स अ कलेक्शन ऑफ प्लेज एंड महेश दत्तानी वाज द फर्स्ट the first playwright first indian playwright or first playwright in english to receive the sahitya akademi award it's in probably 1996 or 1997 like that okay 1996 probably so it's by it's a work and the work is called final solution final solution okay it's final solution okay final solution and other uh, plays final solution and other plays this is the full title of this work for this work mahesh dattani received the sahitya akademi award uh, and, and for the first recipient of for first playwright to receive the sahitya akademi award uh, for his book of plays final solutions and other plays in 1998 exactly it's 1998 actually okay in 1998 1998 पे ठीक है चलो न्यू हिस्टोरिसिज्म द टाइम वाज क्वाइंट बाय ये तो बहुत इजी है स्किप एंड स्ट्रिंग 44 न्यू हिस्टोरिसिज्म हम्म Hmm, exactly go to 1998 it's not this ah uh, this term was coined by stephen greenblatt so he is the right answer stephen greenblatt man is born and everywhere he is in chance no it's d actually pramod it's d hmm It's Stephen Greenblatt is the right answer. Forty-four का C right answer है. It's not Frederick Jameson, rather it's Stephen Greenblatt. New historicism. Man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. This is the famous opening line of Jack the Grocer, Jean the Grocer's famous work. Which novel is beginning with this famous quotation, famous line, that is, man is born free. and everywhere he is in chains exactly go to d and you have the next question on your screen 45 keep answering in the comment box do like the session as well share with your friends and here your options are the social contract email or education confessions julie or the heloise these are all works by jean jacques rousseau this is a question from world literature here the right answer uh, would be the social contract here the right answer is the social contract this novel the social contract is beginning uh, with this line the famous line so here a is the right answer hmm by jean jacques rousseau the ac exactly go to your absolute right here the social contract is the right answer so the ac called of simulation and dissimulation is a work by thomas de quincy francis bacon charles lamb mary lamb who wrote the ac called of simulation and dissimulation here it's a work by simulation and dissimulation is a work by 
Yeah, the social contract is a novel, even it's a theory as well, it's a concept as well. The so here the social contract is a novel by Jin Jagrasu. Even there is a concept, the theory social contract. It's by Francis Bacon. Of simulation and dissimulation is a work by Francis Bacon. Jimmy Porter, the vituperative anti hero, who is the archetype of the angry young man, appears in John Osborne's famous play, The Entertainer, Look Back in Anger, Evidence, The Waste of Swage. Here, this work was performed in 1956. It's a kitchen sink drama. It's a kitchen sink, kitchen sink drama. First performed in 19, 1956 here, Jimmy Porter, it's look back in anger exactly, look back in anger, well done, look back in anger is the right answer, hmm. well done, promote. Okay, moving on to question number. Okay, you got it, got it. Moving on to question 48. The New Hesperides and other poems is a work by John Crow Ransom, J. Spingham, I. A. Richards, W. E. B. Du Bois. Here, who wrote the New, uh, the new Hesperides and other poems? Okay, now here is question number 48. The new Hesperides and other poems, the work by Joe E. Spingarn. Joel E. J. E. Spingarn. It's not John Crow Anjum. It's Joel E. Spingarn has written this work called The New Hesperides and Other Poems. Okay, who for the first time has used new criticism? J. E. Spingarn. In his lectures for the first time he is used new criticism. Cello Joe E. Spingarn. Who wrote the sonnet When I Have Fears? This is actually a lesser known work. The sonnet When I Have Fears. Cross Hilda Dulitel, Amy Lowell, John Keats. The sonnet when I have peers. No, New Has Parties by Joel by Joel is Pingan. When I have peers. This is a work, this is a sonnet by the sonnet when I have peers. It's by John Keats. Okay, Kids has written this sonnet called John Kids. Exactly, well done. Got it. The Subjection of Women, published in 1869, is an important text of George Eliot, Byron, John Stuart Mill, Thomas Hardy. The Subjection of Women is an important text of George Eliot, Byron, John Stuart Mill, Hardy. Here the right answer is okay. Got it. Got it. Now here is subjection of women. Subjection of women is by John Stuart Mill. C is the right answer. Okay. So I told you to tell you that the big five of hmm, C actually exactly C that is John Stuart Mill. Yeah. The big five of restoration committee of restoration comedy include first one is the 
William Congreve William Congreve okay then we have William Y Charlie second or third one is George Etheridge then Farquhar and John Van Brew says John Van Brew who wrote the provoked husband that was completed by Collie Sieber and the fifth one is uh, you have the last one is George Farquhar the big statism okay the big five of restoration comedy and restoration comedy starts with restoration comedy starts with what restoration comedy uh, starts with George Etheridge's work the court man of moat the man of moat okay write it down Congreve Y. Charlie George Etheridge Sir John Van Brew and George Parker they are known as the big five of restoration comedy the restoration comedy is actually a metropolitan genre, genre with London as its major setting and adultery was the major theme wheat, quick repertory among the gentlemen there is a presence of stereotypes as well like the predatory widow, the gullible young man, this place had a stock situation like cuckoldry, amorous pursuits, it was concerned with the upper classes which one the man of the man of mode ok George Ether is the man of mode the man of mode this is the work it's marking the beginning of restoration comedy the man of mode ok by George Etheridge marking the beginning of restoration drama ok exposing the social hypocrisy of the society and they were heavily influenced by Ben Johnson as well and the works of Beamer and Fletcher Okay, I'll be ending the session here. We have discussed 50 questions in this marathon session. See you tomorrow. I'll catch up with you soon. Good night, everyone. And God bless you, everyone. Thank you.